Welcome to Grace for Today. Blessings, everybody. God bless you, and I pray that the Lord will increase you and keep you in every way. You know, we're talking about God is and uh, our affirmations and meditations. And this morning as I was reading, um, the one thing that came to mind is God is trustworthy. So we're going to talk about trust. And to say that someone or something is trustworthy is to say that um, they are worth trusting. They have demonstrated a consistency. Um, they they are have demonstrated or manifested in a man. Hey, Greg, or manifested uh, um, that they have earned uh, through their manners, through their behavior. Good morning, everybody. Um, and so when we understand that God is trustworthy, he uh, is worth trusting. And the people who trust him are blessed. Let's read. Uh, one of my favorite passages besides Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. One of my favorite passages again is Psalm 84. As I was starting to share reading uh, the two verses I wanted to share with you, I thought how can I not read to you this entire psalm? Because it is so, it has so many nuggets that will bless your life. Thank you for those of you who share as soon as you come on. And uh, we're going to read a little bit. So today is day 11 of God is in our affirmations and meditations. You know, I must drink some water. One of the things that's important for us as believers is not just our Sunday morning worship, not just our Wednesday night worship, but it's our daily walk. There is... Um, there is a, a scripture that I was reading, and I have to admit, I don't know where I saw it. Um, but it said, it may be in one of these translations, but he, he was talking about um, the, the man who is blessed. It wasn't this one, because that's not even there. So, let's see if it's in this one. Um, this is it. Psalm 84, verse 11. When we think about walking with God, we can't just limit it to a few hours on Sunday morning. God wants to impact the way we live our lives, how we live our lives. Not that he wants to control it, but that by walking, hey, Delzy Edwards, um, when we walk with him, there is a blessing that comes because he orders our steps. He directs us. He helps us. He helps us to think clearly. There's a song. I'm going to read. I'm going to read. There's a song that says, oh, let me do this. I forgot. There's a song that says, daily I will. Well, honor thee. I don't know that song either. Lamb of God who died for me. We must walk with him daily. We must reverence him daily. As believers, that's what makes us believers, is that we have daily communion with him. I told you all yesterday, I was listening to Rick Renner. Y'all need to feed your spirits? Go to YouTube, pick up a couple of Rick Renner's vid YouTube videos. Um, there are plenty of people, but he's just one that we did a study on at church. And... Um, he talked about the adversary, but yeah, really, we need to learn. He said that the first thing he does before his feet hit the floor is that they raise, he and his wife raises their hands to God and begin to thank him for another day. To thank him for another day and to honor him. And then they, decide, they, they, they get up and they go have their individual time with the Lord. He said before he, he eats anything, before he drinks his coffee, he wants to make sure that he honors God, that God is first. We give him the first of our mornings. Listen, beloved, we, you may not have an international ministry like Rick Renner, but we need the power of God like Rick Renner. We need to be able to accomplish great things, whether we're in the marketplace or in the church. God wants you to be blessed. Let me read this scripture to you. He says, um, I'll read verse 11. It says, for Jehovah God is our light 
and our protector. Sometimes we try to protect ourselves and we make a mess. The scripture says, he gives us grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those, here it is, the, the King James Version says, who walk uprightly, but this one says, no good thing will he withhold from those who walk along his paths. Who walk along his paths. Those who walk with him. Walking is not the same as running. It's not speed walking. It is walking with God. We can't be in a hurry for the manifestations. We just need to learn how to walk with God. Let me read to you this passage today. He says, verse 1, I'm just going to read it to you. I got time to read to y'all. I'm going to read to you. Psalm 84, verse 1. Y'all got your Bibles, your stationery, or go to your tablet or your computer. Read along with me. It says, to the chief musician upon Gittith, a psalm of the sons of Korah. Now, you must remember that the psalm, the book of psalms, we usually say it was written by David, but David didn't write every psalm in the book of psalms. This says a psalm for the sons of Korah. They, so here you have the sons of Korah wrote this particular psalm. How amiable uh, are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. That means how beautiful they are. It's a lovely place. It's a lovely place. Where God's, uh, where his tabernacles, how, where they are, O Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts is not just the Lord of a lot of people. He's the Lord, he's the captain of the armies. The hosts refer to armies. The New English translation says, how lovely is the place where you live, O Lord, who rules over all. Who, hey Clarissa. Who, who rules over all. How lovely is the place. We must have that same conviction. Lord, how lovely is the place where you live. You said, Sister Edna, I've never been to the place where he lives. Well, he said where two or three are gathered in his name, he's there in the midst of them. There's something about being in the house of our God. I know it's kind of odd that we're in a pandemic and you have this passage. Let me look at it again. This passage that says the title for this passage in the Bible is longing for the temple worship. Some of us are too content to not be in worship. We are too uh, complacent about not being in worship. That's what he's talking about. How beautiful, how lovely, how amiable are your tabernacles. I miss being in your place. I miss the worship. I miss the, 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 the atmosphere of the body worshiping together, of the body worshiping together. He said uh, that, you know, the word two or three together, he's there in the midst of them. He says, behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. For it is, it is as the ointment, the oil that ran down the beard, even the skirts. There's something cohesive about us attending worship. Now, if you have a health challenge, we encourage you to watch online. But feed yourself the word of God. Feed yourself the word of God. We go everywhere else we want to go. But those of you that says, I ain't been nowhere. I, I don't go nowhere. I get all my stuff delivered. I got you. I got you, bro. I got you, sis. But we need to be honest. We're not finding the house of God a place we desire to be. We haven't missed the worship. I miss the worship. I miss the worship. I go every Sunday. I, st I started back going on Wednesdays. I miss the worship. I want to be with everybody else raising my hands, even if they don't raise their hands. I'm going to be there raising my hands. I'm going to be there lifting my hands, giving him glory. I'm going to be right there. Uh, we need to remind, right, Elder Brent, in his presence is fullness of joy. Some of us don't have joy because we're not even trying to get into his presence. We're okay with, um, with everything being automated, everything being online. We cannot be okay. There's something about corporate worship. There's something about coming together. 
There's something about the power of God being present when the body comes together. Let me read on. I'm not going to finish this today. He says, verse 2, my soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cried out for the living God. There's something about, there's a scripture, I believe it's in the book of Acts. It says about the, the disciples that they went from house to house breaking bread. They continued, this is the scripture, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and breaking of bread, I think it is. God bless you, woman of God, Melissa. And he says, and in fellowship, in fellowship, in fellowship, they continued um, in fellowship. We must remind ourselves the adversary does not care. Here it is. Here it is. And in those of you who are saying, I ain't never read that scripture. I'm going to give it to you, beloved. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. They were continuing to, a fellowship is not me. I mean, you can have digital fellowship, I guess, but it's like, it's something about looking at somebody's face. It's something about sitting in their presence. There are people I just enjoy sitting in their presence. We don't have to talk. Let me just sit with you for a minute. Let me sit with you. Let me sit with you. I just want to be in your presence. Listen, we should want to be in the presence of God and in the presence of his sons and his daughters. All of them, may, some of them may need whoopings. They might. They might need a whooping. But there's something about us coming together that invites the presence of God, that strengthens us, that strengthens us for our journey. So you see, they continued in the teaching and fellowship. Don't you let the enemy tell you you don't need to fellowship with other believers. Yes, you do. We are sharpened by our fellowship with one another. Iron sharpens iron. There may be a few sparks, but you're going to get sharp. Some of us don't, we don't realize you're not sharp because you are not interacting with enough people to sharpen you. I remember the days where I was challenged. And and when I would say things, I would be called on the carpet. Did I think that they were a little, you know, a bit too much micromanaging and every aspect? Yes, but it sharpened me. It made me better in my walk with God. You should want to have fellowship. You should want. I know, I know. I said verse 8, 11 and 12. I said 11 and 12. I did. And we're going to it. But I believe there's something in here we need to remember. And we need to remind ourselves about who God is. He is the one we should long for. You're in love with someone. You, got, you should be in love with your spouse. I'm not talking about those butterflies. But you're committed to your spouse or your significant other. And you, you know, you love them. Let's just not talk about that. Uh, let's talk about just regular old um, story gay. We just have familial uh, love for our family. We miss them. I miss my family. I miss my family. I miss the fellowship we have. We used to get together for Thanksgiving every year, but COVID kind of put a stop to that. Um, but I miss interacting with some of the ones who are a little special, the ones who uh, are always quiet, the ones who are just, you know, normal, if you want to call it that. But there are some who are always funny. And that's what I call special. We, the fellowship strengthened us. We must have the same thing. We need to long for our fellowship with one another, with one another, with one another, with one another. Don't you let the enemy, st and that's why sometimes the enemy can so easily steal from you because we want to keep everything to ourselves. The scripture says in the multitude of counsel, there's safety. When we, I'm not saying you got to tell your business. I'm just saying when we interact with people, it strengthens us. 
You are strengthened through your fellowship with one another. You learn things when you fellowship with someone. You learn some things that you, you know, sometimes I wish I hadn't learned that. But you learn some things and you learn how to pray through. You learn that people need your prayers. You need, you learn that people are missing you just as much as you're missing them. Our, our first lady used to sing this song all the time. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. I think that's right. It is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. We need each other. We need each other. And we need him. He says, my soul, I got to go. My time is gone. My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. We're part of the body and we need each other. We need each other. Some people you talk to will make you pray. But you can't turn them away because love doesn't do that. All right, I'm going to stop there. We'll pick this up tomorrow. God bless you, Missionary Quinn. We have to remind ourselves that no matter what the world is saying, they still going out doing what they do. They still going out having parties. They're still going to the bars and clubs. We're still the only ones who are afraid. Beloved, don't be deceived. Let's pray. We'll pick up Psalm 84 tomorrow. The rest of it. Some of it. Father, we long for your presence. We just thank you because you are so trustworthy. You will not harm us. You will only cause good to come to us as we walk along your path. Order our steps. Father, those who are hurting, those who are grieving, I pray that you would just help us, strengthen us, give us grace and glory. Every brother, every sister who's listening to me and who will listen, let grace be upon them. Heal them from the inside out. Be our healer be our healer and help us have a yearning a longing for fellowship and worship with our brothers and sisters and in your presence we thank you for being the god you said you'd be for being trustworthy you bring good to our lives no weapon formed against us will produce what the enemy intended. Turn things around for us. Turn things around for us. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it. And we receive it done even now. Amen. All right, everybody. My time is gone. My second or third alarm has gone off. I want you all to pray for somebody else. Call their names. You say, I don't know none of these people. Well, you pray for me. My name is Edna Gray Jameson, and I need prayer. I feel like I'm in one of those uh, meetings. My name is Edna, and I'm an addict. I need prayer. Y'all pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for somebody else. God loves everybody. Yeah, he does. And our prayers matter. All right, so... Share the video, type in, catch the replay, hashtag graced for today. And um, don't forget about my book on Amazon, 30 Lessons on Unapologetic Living. If you've already read the book, would you be kind enough to go to Amazon and you thought it was good? Um, I love you too, Sister Delzy. If you thought it was okay or good or something, would you go to Amazon and write a review, please? I did check the other day. Please go ahead and write a review. I'd appreciate it. You can review on, the, on Grace for Today as well, but I'd appreciate one on uh, Amazon. 
So people do read those. I read them before I buy books personally. Hey, don't forget to join me in the morning. Don't forget about our YouTube channel. This video will be uploaded very shortly. Please share it with somebody who does not have social media. And I hope that you will join me in the morning at 7.15 a.m. Central Time as we continue to look at Psalm 84. Psalm 84. Go ahead and read it. Read it. It'll bless you. All right. So until then, remember this time spent. The title of the book, 30 Lessons on Unapologetic Living. Um, here it is. <clears throat> Actually, if you type my name in, Edna Gray Jameson, I only have one book. I only have one, but another one is coming. All right, <clears throat> I'm going to type it in the comments. 30 Lessons on Unapologetic Living. Um, it's a good little book. It's like a devotional. It's a study. It's not just to sit and read. It's actually a study. There are pages for you to write on um, to what the Lord speaks to you. And um, may it bless you. All right, y'all. So you're welcome. So join me in the morning at 7.15 a.m. Central Time. Until then, remember this. Time spent in the Word of God is never wasted and you have been graced for today. I hope to see you then. God bless you. Peace.